Hi, welcome again. This is the second supplementary video of our course Parallel Programming. And you know this is a face-to-face -face course, so I strongly recommend you to come to class for this class, but uh, for this course. But uh, if you are not able to come to class, then uh, you can follow the subjects by using these supplementary videos. And you know the last video is for the first week of this course, and uh, we have started with a problem. Uh, which we try to find to find the value of pi by using a Monte Carlo simulation. And today I'm going to start by using the Jupyter notebook and then remind you the problem that we are dealing with. So I'm gonna I'm going to start my Jupyter notebook by clicking this link. You can use the Anaconda Navigator and then you can launch the Jupyter notebook from here. And now I have my notebook. And I'm going to create a new Python 3 notebook by clicking this new button and then select this link. All right, then I have my notebook now. And as you remember, we have used the library random. So I'm going to import this library first, import random. And then I'm going to create a visual uh, description of our problem, finding the value of pi by using Monte Carlo simulation. So I'm going to create some uh, points. Uh, let me draw it first. Let me draw it first for you. And then I'm going to use Fortran. I'm going to use Python, sorry. So let me select uh, this color. And we have a circle like this which its origin is on the point with the coordinates 0 and 0 with a coordinate system like this. So we have x, we have y here, and we have a square around this circle. And then we have generated some random real numbers between minus 1 and plus 1 for x position and also minus 1 and plus 1 plus 1 for the y coordinate and we have generated some points in this square and then we counted the numbers of these points how many points we have in the circle and how many points which we have in total. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing now by using the Python notebook. So I'm going to start with the importing the random library. And then for x and y variable, I'm going to create an array first. So let me create an empty array for x and also an empty array for y. Then for each point, I'm going to append these arrays. So obviously I need uh, I need a, a loop for this purpose. So I'm going to use for loop and let me say, for example, let's use 1000 numbers. Then let's create the positions. Let's generate the positions and append this arrays. So I'm going to append X first with a random number. Then I'm going to use the uniform methods of random library. And of course, I'm going to give the limits as minus one and plus one. So I'm going to do the same thing for y values. So I'm going to append the y array by using the uniform method from random library with the same limits, minus one and plus one. All right, let me check the values for x and y for a moment. So in Jupyter Notebook, you uh, you don't have to use the print function. You, you can just give the name of the array or variable and then hit the shift enter button to run this cell. And then uh, it shows you the ingredient of this, the values of these variables or array. So I'm going to do this, do this thing to see the values. So we have these values in X variables. So we have it. It works correctly, so I can delete this cell now. 
and then I'm going to show you the visual uh, description of this problem. So uh, I think first I'm going to import the import some library, and also I can search it from Google. Uh, let's say uh, Python notebook. Python notebook. And I want to create a scatter diagram. Scatter plot. Let's select one of these examples. I think matplotlib is okay, so I can click this one. And all right, we need this. Uh, we need this library, and it imports it as plt. And then I can use the plt.scatter method and also uh, I should give the values in an array just we have like we have in X and Y arrays. So I can uh, draw, I can generate this scatter plot. So I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to import the matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So as you know, Python is an interpreted language, so you can import these libraries after uh, doing something. So, uh, in in compiled language, you have to include your headers first, or import your libraries first, and then you should do something. But in Python, uh, because of it's an interpreted language, you can do something, you can do a lot of things, and then you can import a library, and then you can do something else. So I'm going to import this matplotlib.pyplot library in this cell, and then I can use it. So I'm going to use the scatter methods of this library by using the x and y values, which I generated in the previous cell. So shift enter. And then I can see a lot of numbers uh, between the x values minus one and plus one, and also between the y values uh, minus one and plus one. So I I'm going to try to get a picture like this, like the I draw on the screen. So I'm going to change something in this plot. I think first uh, I should I should find how to show the axis in this plot. So let me search it like this matplotlib show axis lines. All right. Let me check this one. All right, there is an example, and this is the question, and this is the answer. So this one works, I think, for me. And also, you can uh, you can turn on a grid by using this method. As I can see, I'm going to copy these two lines to my code, to my notebook, to show the axis, x and y axis. Of course, I can hit the enter button, and after the using the scatter method. I can pass these two lines. All right, then I can get rid of this uh, warning by using the plt.show methods, I think. All right, of course, we are going to use them from the plt namespace. All right, then we have this plot now. Now I think uh, I'm going to try to draw a rectangle, so-called square, and also I'm going to try to draw a circle. Let me search it. Matplotlib draw rectangle. Stack overflow is, I think, what I'm looking for. And I think these two lines will work for me. But first, it says you need to create an instance to figure and also for access. So I think first, I'm going to need this one. 
All right, let me let me do it first. All right, now I have an instance to figure and also access, and then I'm going to use this method ax dot add patch. All right. Let's use it here, and I'm going to change this variable with this instance. So, from patch dot rectangle, then I think I can just take rectangle part, and also I can modify this import line to get an instance to the rectangle method. So, let me change it like adding a line here so i'm going to add from math plot lip dot patch and i'm going to import the rectangle all right then i can use rectangle directly so let's use rectangle and how it how does it work it works like a start point and then width and then height, right? Then we can specify some properties of this rectangle. So I'm going to use this structure and let me change them. Uh, I, 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 I try to create a rectangle starting from this point. So this point has the coordinates minus one and minus one. So I'm going to change the starting point to with the coordinates minus one and minus one. And also it has the width, if it is a square, it has the width two and it has the height two. So I'm going to change these two numbers with two and two. All right, let me try it. A rectangle is not defined because uh, I didn't run this cell. So first I'm going to run this cell and then I'm going to run this cell. All right, now I have uh, a rectangle. All right, do we have any other properties? Let me check it. Does it work like this rectangle and, and a question mark? Then shift enter. All right, then I can reach the doc string of this function. So uh, it is an have documentation in Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to look for look for a property. All right, this one, alpha. By using the alpha, I can I think I can increase the transparency of this rectangle. So I can make it. Uh, I can make these points as visible. So, I'm going to try, let's give a value for the alpha, let's say 0 0.2. All right, it works. So, now I can see the rectangle, I can see the square, and also I can see the points. All right, it's working. So... For the next step, I'm going to create the circle. So I'm going to do the same thing. I think uh, we can have uh, another patch with the name circle. Let me try it first. Uh, let's say I'm going to import from matplotlib.patch rectangle and circle. Let me try it. All right, it doesn't give any error. So I'm going to check the existence of this function by typing its name in this cell and also add a question mark shift enter and all right we can use it with the same syntax with the rectangle so i'm going to add this page and it also has an alpha property so i can use it and this time i'm going to give the origin i think yes at center with positions x and y and then i'm going to give the radius all right i can close this now 
and I'm going to add a line with ax at add patch circle uh, with the origin of course zero and zero and with the radius one all right then I'm going to give the alpha property 0.2 all right I think now I have a circle and also I have a square but I cannot uh, see them so let me define a color here let's say that this one make it yellow for example and then make the circle red to it right all right now we have a circle and we have we have a square so i think i can change the color of the these points let me make them black all right it's working and also i want to change the size of these points and i'm going to get some help from jupyter notebook again then let me say plt dot scatter question mark all right i have x and y arguments and then i have an s here s i think all right scalar or array like array like and this argument is for the marker size point square all right then i can give a value for this argument let me add it as with one for example all right now i can have a lot of points let me change this number up to 5000 for example then run all this cell again then i have a lot of numbers all right i think i can uh, do another thing with this uh, with this plot so i can also get rid of this axis and i think now i have an instance to access with the ax variable then i can try it here like ax dot top all right we got all these methods we got a lot of methods and i want to get rid of the axis so i'm going to try this one axis and let's put a question mark at the end of this line and shift enter to get some help all right what does it say all right it says if you use off then you can turn off access lines and labels so i'm going to use it to get rid of this uh outer frame all right so i'm going to do this before showing the plots so let's say ax dot access off i think all right now i have this plot and then at last uh, i'm going to i want to see a square plot like i draw here on the screen so I'm going to search it from Google and I say matplotlib square plot. Make a square plot with equal axis in matplotlib. All right, let's try it. And it says you can use set aspect methods. All right, then turn back to Jupyter Notebook and try it set aspect and the question mark to get some help all right it has some options and you should use ax dot set aspect with these values auto and equal and also you can give a number so i think now the default option is auto 
and I'm going to change it to equal to same to get same scaling from data to plot uh, units for x and y. So I'm going to use it. And after turning off the axis, I'm going to use axis set aspect uh, with, the, with the value equal. All right, then I get a square. So after completing your Monte Carlo simulations, you can also uh, get the visualization of your simulation. And also after uh, make your code parallel to work on these processors and all these cores, and then you can uh, get the visualization of all these cores separately, all these threads separately. I can uh, want you to create uh, such plots, so I want to give how to create these plots in this video. All right, then I can continue. All right, we now remember our problem. And where were we? I'm going to check. I'm going to delete this drawing first. I'm going to check it from our team. For example, this one. Product programming morning class. All right. I have uploaded this video last week. Then, uh, then we have completed the first and also the second lecture in the class. Also, we have written these codes in the class, but uh, in the video version of this course, uh, we are going to check the last point from the video. So I'm going to run this video. And go to the end. All right, we have a code like this. We have a Python code like this. And also we have written the Fortran version of this code. And I think we have compared the running time of these codes. So we have 24.78 seconds for, I think, 10 million points. And uh, we have generated the same number of points, 10 million points in Fortran, but uh, it has completed the running, uh, it has completed the simulation within the just 0 0.32 seconds. It's a big difference, uh, but uh, before we are going to talk about this difference, first I'm going to improve these codes uh, by uh, turning it to an object-oriented code. So first I'm going to create a class to get the running time of all the codes which we are going to write in this course. So uh, it is going to be a running time counter class. And then also I'm going to write a class to calculate the value of pi by using the Monte Carlo simulation. So let me turn it off and let me create a folder in my desktop now. For today's video, let's say uh, programming video 02. I'm going to create a PyCharm project in this folder. You can use whatever you want. If you want to use, then uh, you can go with the notebook structure and if you want you can use some uh, id like me like pycharm uh, to write your python codes it doesn't matter for me the notebooks are useful when you want to try something very fast and then see the result results uh, like this scatter plot and also the ides are very useful when you uh, make it make your codes like a complete project All right, we are about to ready. This is an example, but I'm not going to use it. 
So, you know, uh, I accept you as you know the object oriented programming, but you don't know Python very well. So, I'm not going to teach you the concepts of the object oriented programming, but I'm going to teach the uh, how uh, you can do the, you can uh, employ these aspects in Python. So, uh, in Python, it's a script language, so it's an interpreted language. But uh, you you should uh, you can uh, run your codes by just uh, running the file directly, or you can just import the Python code in another Python script. So first, I'm going to check this. So if this Python if this Python file runs directly from a terminal or just by double clicking it in some file explorer then a main function will run right so i'm going to check it first so let's say that if the name is main then it means print running Directly, for example. All right, and let me run it. All right, then I'm going to create uh, another Python file to include in this main.py file, which will include our classes. So let's give a name, my name for example, bc.py and it will do the same thing like we did in the last video. Uh, it will count the time, it will count the running time and also it will generate, uh, it will try to find the value of pi by using the Monte Carlo simulation. So I'm going to do it first. I'm going to import a random library and I'm going to import the time library. And first, I'm going to create the tic tac. I'm going to create a class with the name tic tac. So it will count the running time first. I'm going to define a constructor for this class. So in Python, we can do it by using the name double, uh, double underscore init. And self is the same keyword which you, uh, which we, which you were using in Java or some uh, other programming languages like C++. It's the same thing with this. All right. So uh, it works to. We are using it to get access to the uh, class itself. So I'm going to. Uh, define some variables first. Let's define t1 and then t2 with the initial value 0. And then I'm going to create, I'm going to define the first function which starts the time counter with the name tick. And it will just get the current time to our variable t1 all right then i'm going to create another method which has the name tuck and it will stop the time counter so this time i'm going to change the value of t2 and of course it will have it will have the current time again all right and also the method tuck will return a value which is the difference between these two times so i'm going to find the returning value by making the process making the operation self dot t2 minus self dot t1 All right it's a very simple class All right then i'm going to check this in this file, bc.py, 
pi, I'm going to add a similar part, which I write uh, in main.py. So I'm going to check if name equals to main. Then I'm going to try to get an instance to the method to the class TikTok. So let's say TT is equal to TikTok. Right. And let's start the counter by calling the tick method. And then let's sleep a little. For example, five seconds. And then let's write the value return. Sorry, print, not return, print tt.talk. All right, let me save it. And then there's a warning because we don't use the random library yet. So let me save it and then run it. Run BC. All right. So I think it's slipping now. And after completing the five seconds, uh, it will give us the result of the counter. It approximately, it's approximately five seconds. All right, now I'm going to try it from this file. So I'm going to import this class first. So I'm going to use the keyword from. So from BC import TikTok. All right. And then if name equals to main, then I'm going to do the same thing, tt tiktok and start the counter with the method tick and then print tt.talk. But how can I understand? Uh, which one is working so i'm going to use a uh, another keyword here another output here let's say time equals to let's say 0.5f and then a percentage and then tt.talk let me save it and then run i'm going to run main.py file all right, now it says running directly this output, and also it will give me the output uh, time equals to 0, 0.000 because, because we don't add the slip function. Uh, I'm going to add the time dot slip with some seconds, but we don't have the access to time library in this file, so I'm going to import time library here and then run main.py file again like this now i'm mating i'm mating 3 seconds and then i see the output and if you noticed now if i import some class from bc file then we don't see this output here all right so this part only works if you run this file directly let me check my camera if it is very dark here no you can see me all right so this part is only working if you run this file directly so this is the difference between the an importing a pi file or uh, running it all right now we get an access to this file i think we no longer need the time library so let me put a comment here. I'm going to continue writing something from here. And now I'm going to add the other class here, which finds the value of pi by using the Monte Carlo simulation. So I'm going to use the name find pi now. And let me create an instructor again, constructor again, sorry. With the name in it and now i'm going to define a variable with name n and also i 
which corresponds to the total number of points and also the inner number of the number of inner points which we have inside the circle and I'm going to define our function to our points which we wrote in the last video to our points all right with the self and also I'm going to give another total number of points with the name double n and then I'm going to write a loop for i in a range double n and let's generate a random number a random position for x with the method uniform with the limits minus one plus one and then for y also uniform minus one plus one why do we have another parenthesis here all right now let me calculate the value of r by taking a sum of the squares of these two uh, coordinates and also i'm going to increase the number of n with one for one loop so i'm going to check the value of r if it is less than or equal to one then I'm going to increase the number of increase the value of i by one. All right. If we need it to see the value of pi, I'm going to create another method here, which returns the value of y. So four times i divided by n. So I'm not going to teach you anything about the scope. So you can uh, so you can understand this i is a different thing uh, from this i, all right? So it's the object-oriented programming. I accept you uh, know you all know these concepts, but you don't know Python. If I'm wrong, then please notice me. Please warn me. All right. Now we have these methods. Let me turn back to main.py file and here after starting the time counter I'm going to delete this line I no longer need to print anything so let me delete this one and I'm going to create an instance to to our class findpy so let me give a name finding underscore pi Pi. and of course I should I have to import this class from file PC and it's okay and let me throw the points finding pi that throw point uh, maybe I should correct I should change this name it's not point, but points. All right, change this to points. Then let's give 10 millions again. All right, now let me get the result for the value of pi by calling the method value of pi from the finding pi instance. So now I'm going to print all these values with a formatted output. So pi will be equal to something with eight digits after the point. Of course, it's a real number. And also we have some points. And let me see all of them together. I over N like this. And also we can combine the time with this line. Let me increase the size a little bit. All right, so I'm going to use something like 0.5f for the time. All right, let me continue from the nil line. So a percentage symbol and then give the value of pi, then give the value of i and then give the value of n and then 
uh, get the result of our time counter. So I should delete this line now. And it's okay. Let me run it. So we are going to run main.py file. So we should wait a little bit. I don't talk about the homeworks in these videos, but uh, they are not homeworks which you get a grade for them uh, yet, but they are important. Also, I want to add here the word seconds. All right, we have completed. So uh, I'm going to talk about the homeworks in class. Uh, they are very important. So you can see the homework of last week, for example, from this announcement. Uh, they are about the JIT, which is uh, a just-in-time compiler from the Namba library. And also, I'm going to... Uh, I gave an homework with this notation, which is in the parentheses and, and the comma. They are important, but I don't talk about them in the videos. Please come into class uh, for talking about the, to talk about the homeworks. But uh, the homeworks which I gave you the grades and I'm going to give them from the assignment part of the teams. So you are safe if you don't come to class, but I strongly recommend you. All right, now it's completed. We have this pi value with these numbers uh, in this uh, time sequence. So now our code is object oriented. We have two methods. Uh, the first one is tick tock and the second one is find pi. Now I'm going to try to make it multi-thread. So now it's just single thread. We can check it from the task manager, I think. Let me run it again. We have PyCharm here. It's just a single thread. And also take a look at the performance of this computer. So we have the usage something like 38%. Some cores are working in a schedule, I think, and it's completed. Right, it's completed now. And also, uh, there's a lot on my computer now because I'm recording the screen. So the idle load, I think it's about 25%. And if I run the code, then it makes uh, 37, 38%. So I think it's uh, working like on the 15% of uh, our CPUs. So let me create the threads. And let me check the time first. So now the video is on something like 40 minutes. So I just going to give you an overview. So let's import threads from the trading library. From trading, import threads and just create a thread now. So uh, instead of calling these methods directly, calling this method directly to a point, uh, I'm going to create a thread here. Let's say threads, targets, same thing, finding, underscore by, throw points, and arguments, n, which is the homework of last week, this notation. In the parentheses, just n and a comma. Why do I use it? All right, then we have our thread, and then let's start this thread. Let me increase the size a little bit. All right, now 
instead of running directly now we have a thread all right and how is it going to be is there an error here on research reference n all right because we don't we don't create it let's create it first like this instead of writing all these numbers in this uh, notation i am just going to use i'm just going to use n and now we are okay let me check it i'm going to save it and i'm going to turn back to our task manager and run it oh we just see the output with the 0 0.01 seconds but it's not that fast because it's still working it's still working now we have the load about 40 percent and i think the process is also active by charm all right it's still active here it makes uh, something about 15 percent and now it's okay i think now let me do something i'm going to take this part in a loop in the range uh, let's say 25 and the indention is very important in python so i'm going to do this and i think it will work save and run so it will show us a lot of outputs a lot of lines let me check no, but i forgot i forgot something let me wait let me wait first to complete this process and then i'm going to add a line with sleep function let me wait I think now we're okay. We're okay. All right, now we're okay. And now let's import time library again. Import time. And come here. And after printing all these values, slip one second. All right. So it will show us every second the output and we can understand the improvement so now run main all right the numbers are increasing every second What is the problem here? What is the problem here? Please pause the video and think about the problem. Problem is use this function here outside the loop. So I'm going to cut this commands and add this line here to calculate in every second for pi so save again and then let's make it 30 and run again all right now it's approaching the real value of pi which is 3.14159 something and the number of i the value of i and also the value of n are increasing and also time is advancing So, after, I think, here, after about 25 seconds, seconds, it has completed, the thread is completed, but uh, there's a point here, the main process does not wait 
to complete the thread. Does not wait the thread to complete. All right. So you should make it uh, by hand. What if I create more than one thread? Then I should arrange all these threads and synchronize all these threads and be careful about the values. So uh, I can face a problem like we have faced before adding this line in the loop. So I, I, I have to be very careful about the multiprocessing, uh, multi-threading uh, codes. All right. So I have created a class in this video. Uh, to make it suitable to run in multi-threads mode. So uh, in the next video or tomorrow in the class, uh, I'm going to continue to improve my code to run on multi-threads and then run on multi-processors. See you in the next video. If I can stop the video.